All right. Welcome back. Infinite Jest. Jeff's. Jeff's. <laughs> Infinite Jeff as I read Jeff. The, I Jeff. I Jeff it to you. Infinite Jest. Here we go. You know what it is. We're on to page 57. Uh, and remember last time I said that the uh, that was the end of a paragraph? Uh, that, the end of that page? Well, this next paragraph is three pages long. A little over three pages long. So, I mean, and actually, I... Okay, it's not all one sentence, but it's probably literally like 20 sentences for three pages. Because that's what he's doing. That's his thing right here. DFW. Anyway, page 57. Heinz 57. 57 varieties. 57 pages of this book. Let's go. <clears throat> Except, unfortunately, the owner of the house turned out to be still home, even though both of his cars and the rest of his family were gone. The little guy was asleep, sick in bed, upstairs in acetate pajamas with a hot water bottle on his chest, and half a glass of OJ and a bottle of NyQuil, footnote 17, and a foreign book, and copies of International Affairs and Interdependent Affairs, and a pair of thick specks, and an industrial-sized box of Kleenex on the bedside table, and an empty vaporizer barely humming at the foot of the bed. And the guy was, to say the least, nonplussed to wake up and see high-filter flashlights crisscrossing over the unlit bedroom walls and bureau and teak chiffonier as Gately and associates scanned for a wall safe which surprisingly like 90% of people with wall safes conceal in their master bedroom behind some sort of land or seascape painting. People turned out so identical in certain root domestic particulars, it made Gately feel strange sometimes, like he was in possession of certain overlarge private facts to which no man should be entitled. Gately had a way stickier conscience about the possession of some of these large particular facts than he did about making off with other people's personal merchandise. But then... All of a sudden, in a mid-silent search for a safe, here's this upscale homeowner turning out to be home with a nasty head cold while his family's out in a two-car foliage tour of what's left at the, of the Berkshires, writhing groggily and nyquilized around on the bed and making honky adenoidal sounds and asking what in bloody hell is the meaning of this, except he's saying in Quebecois French, which means to these thuggish U.S. drug addicts in Halloween clowns' masks exactly nothing. He's sitting up in bed, a little and older type homeowner with a football-shaped head and gray Van Dyke and eyes you can tell are used to corrective lenses as he switches on the bright bedside lamp. Gately could easily have screwed out of there and never looked back, but here indeed in the lamplight is a seascape over next to the chiffonier, and the associate has a quick peek and reports that the safe behind it is to laugh at, as it can be opened with harsh language, almost. And oral narcotics addicts tend to operate on, the, on an extremely rigid physical schedule of need and satisfaction, and Gately is at this moment firmly in the need part of the schedule. And so D.W. Gately disastrously decides to go ahead and allow a non-violent burglary in, 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 to become, in effect, a robbery which the operative legal differences involve either violence or the coercive, coercive threat of the same. And Gately draws himself up to his full menacing height and shines his flashlight in the little homeowner's roomy eyes and addresses him the way menacing cre criminals speak in popular entertainment. D's for THs, various apocopes, Apocope. Apocope. Okay. Various, uh, various apocopes and so on, and takes hold of the guy's ears and conducts him down to a kitchen chair and binds his arms and legs to the chair with electrical cords neatly clipped from refrigerator and can opener and M Cafe brand automatic Cafe Olay maker, binds him just short of gangrenously tight because he's hoping the Berkshire foliage, foliage is prime, and the... Yeah, that's it for page 57. Apocope. What does that mean? Um, it's the loss of a sound, or sounds at the end of a word. Ah, like the, e.g. the derivation of curio from curiosity. So, um, 
I'm gonna myrtleize you. I don't know if that's what. <laughs> but he's dropping a pack of peas like it's uh, like like he's like he hearts Huckabees. I don't know. That's terrible. On uh, page fifty-seven, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to page fifty-eight next. I'm gonna stop recording this. Process it. Turn it into an MP or a WAV file I can use, and then I'm gonna do fifty-eight, and then I'm I'm done with Infinite Jeff for at least for right now. So keep on a pack of peeing. My 